We're here on the outskirts of Austin, Texas. Fancy neighborhood it just went up two or three years ago. Fortunately for me, I was here to see it before they demolished the native plants to put in all the horticultural garbage and non-native maladapted monstrosities behind me. Strolling up this recently cleared hill, and we got really cool natives like this Vernonia Lindheimeri, a Texas ironweed, built for the heat, built for the winds, built for the aridity. You can see those reduced thin leaves. They got pubescence on the other side of them. It just means tiny hairs and they got those incredible pink flowers. That thing evolved for millions of years with the insects, the fungi, and the vertebrates that are specific to Texas. It has a context here. That garbage does not. I was also here to see plants like the Texas persimmon, Diosporos texana. This is a young one. They can get upwards of 15, 20 feet tall. You can see it's got that beautiful smooth bark, kind of analogous to crepe myrtles. Except this, unlike crepe myrtles, is built for the Texas heat. It's got reduced leaves and those tiny hairs on the undersides which help mitigate moisture loss. But it also has delicious edible fruit. This is an immature one. They turn brown one mature. It's a true persimmon. It's in the genus of persimmons. We also have Agarita, Berberus trifoliolata, a spiny bastard, gotta be, to live in Texas, but it also produces red berries that are edible and can be made into like a lemonade tasting high vitamin C tea. Also has roots that have the compound berberate in them, a yellow compound that's medicinal, good for you when you're sick, you can make the roots into a tea uh, if you got a cold or something. Texas silk tassel, we got this garia species right here. You can see it also has that chalky mint green color due to the presence of hairs on the leaves. If you're catching the presence of hairs to be a common trait among the Texas flora, you'd be correct because hairs help plants deal with both heat, wind, and drought. Also got this salvia anglomania. It's not blooming now, but it's in the mint and oregano family, so it still smells incredible. You can see, look at those hairs on the stem. Beautiful blue flowers when it's going off. The seeds are inside these spent calyxes. These are just the old sepals. The flowers are gone. I'm going to collect some of these. Stalingia texana, always a favorite. Giant taproot in the ground. Vivid green foliage. There's the flowers. They produce a whole lot of nectar on those little nectar discs that you can literally see. So they have a specialist relationship with many of the native bees. Fuck the honeybees. We're concerned with the native bees. Over here, we got Chrysoctinia mexicana, also known as Damianita. Got those cool punctate glands. Smells incredible. Can also make a tea out of these leaves. Got little, you see those little like, dots on the leaves. This thing smells so good, marigold tribe. And last but certainly not least, the Texas Madrone. How many of these were cut to put up non-native cypresses and non-native oaks that went in on the residential community? Things don't need to be like this. Plant native, keep what's here. Keep the machinery that came with the landscape, all right? That's why we plant native. That's all I got. Have a great day. Go fuck yourself. Bye.